Brandon and Darcy are going to walk you through their groups, uh, Forest Management Group 1, uh, Forest Design Innovations, the project they did for Jorg and Gloria Baylor, and Sylvan Woodlands Limited. So, enjoy. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brandon, this is Darcy, and we're both a part of Forest Design Innovations Limited. We're here today to present to you our proposed forest management plan for Jorg and Gloria Baylor and Sylvan Woodlands Limited. Just want to go over a quick overview of what's going to happen today in the presentation. We'll go through some property information, goals and objectives that we set out for ourselves, some methods of inventory and compilation, current property assessment results, five and, five and 25 year operations plans, some sensitivity analyses, and also a breakdown of hours and potential costs of this plan. As for property location, it's located in the southwestern region of, of New Brunswick, approximately 30 kilometers north of Fredericton on Highway 8. For some general information about the property, it's located in the Valley Lowlands ecoregion within the Acadian Forest region. So this supports various shade tolerant species. For access to the property, as I previously mentioned, Highway 8 runs directly through the center. There's also Highway 628, the English Settlement Road, uh, the Zionville Road, and as well as, as two dirt access roads on the eastern and western sides of the property that are very well maintained. For history within the property, the property was purchased in 2015 by our clients and there is a history of pre-commercially thinned areas within the property, some plantations and release cuts. And all these treatments and operations have been carried out between 2006 and 2012. The overarching goal for this project is to assist our clients in owning and operating the Tamworth property in order to produce high quality timber on a sustainable basis and increase shareholder return and value. We have five objectives within this property. The first objective is to maximize growth potential by increasing the composition of longlist species within the, pro within the property and also do this by decreasing the composition of short-lived species by the year 2042 and maintaining these compositions in the preceding years. We also want to deal with the potential for a spruce bud run outbreak in the near future. For this, we want to reduce total merchantable volume with, within balsam fir stand types by 75% by the year 2042 and also maintain these levels. Objective two deals with maintaining and promoting long-lived species within the property. We want to maintain current and also promote the increase in red spruce, yellow birch, and eastern hemlock within the property by the year 2042. In order to protect environmentally sensitive areas, such as stated in our objective three, we want to implement a 30 meter buffer on all major water courses within the property and only allow a maximum of 20% basal area removal. We also want to make sure that operations that are close to or within wet areas within the property are only harvested during winter months to ensure the ground is frozen. Objective four is to increase shareholder return and value into the future. We want to make sure we reduce costs by making sure that at least 50% of all area treated annually is reimbursable through the York Sunbury Charlotte Marketing Board. We also want a non-declining net revenue after the first five years, and we want to increase the value of the property by $100,000 by the year 2042. Our last objective was to increase benefits to the local community of Tamath. By this, we wanted to make sure we tried to increase local property values by increasing the Tamath property value and also contribute to local markets by selling wood products. We also want to continue to provide access to the local community of Tamworth for recreation purposes such as hunting. With that, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Darcy to go through our methods. Thank you, Brandon. So I'll be going over the methodology used in this project as well as the resulting current forest condition. <laughs> so the first stage of our project was using Geo New Brunswick to locate the PID, or property identification numbers used to delineate the property boundaries. With this, we could conduct our inventory. So we used point sampling to collect the basal area of all species present using a 2BAF, or basal area factor prism. We also collected measure trees using a 27BAF prism. In addition to point sampling, we collected various site information which would be pertinent to our project, such as road information and wet area information. For our inventory, we used a plot design with one plot per 1.5 hectares for 455 total plots. These were established using a systematic grid design that also included roads in the area. We conducted plantation plots to look at survival of plantations established within the past two years by our client. To do this, we used fixed area plots with half the regular spacing of our normal plots, so one plot per 0.75 hectares. For our wet area delineation, which is going to be crucial to objective three, protecting our environmentally sensitive areas, we used our inventory data as well as state-of-the-art technology, including LIDAR and wet area mapping information from Jay Ogilvie of the UNB Watershed Center. 
In the end, we have 11 kilometers of total streams, 2.2 kilometers being ephemeral, so these are not permanent streams, they'll dry up in the summer, and 8 kilometers of permanent streams, and we have 69 hectares of wetland areas. So to protect these areas, there's a 30 meter buffer on both our wetlands and our permanent streams. Within the wetland and the wetland buffer, there is no harvesting, and within the permanent stream buffer, there's up to a maximum of 20% basal area removal, which exceeds the provincial guideline of 30%. To look at the variance in our data collection after doing 450 plots, we audited 10% of our total sample plots. You can see here the purple stars. These were assigned randomly using ArcGIS to avoid bias, and we conducted them with the exact same methodology used in our inventory to again establish the variance for our data collection, not the forest-wide variance. The resulting variance shows that we're plus or minus two cubic meters per plot. We are plus or minus for our two BAF sweep, 1.9 trees per plot. For our measure trees, we are plus or minus 0.5 trees per plot for their height, plus or minus 1.2 meters, and for DBH, or diameter at breast height, taken at 1.3 meters, we are plus or minus decimal 86 centimeters. Now, after our inventory is compiled, the next stage is calculating volume as well as delineating our stands. So the stands in the forest are, so the, sorry, the volume of the forest is calculated using our 27 BAF measure trees. To do this, we use DBH in height and Honer's coefficients. So these are three coefficients that relate specifically to the form of each tree. Once volume is calculated, it's divided by basal area to give the V-bar value, or volume to basal area ratio. So V-bar is multiplied by the basal area per hectare from our two BAF sweep to give volume per hectare. With that compiled, the next step is forecasting our forest into the future for an operationals plan. We use two pieces of software, Stamen, which gives a growth and yield forecast, as well as Remsoft's Woodstock. Woodstock allows us to do long-term forest planning, and this allows you to basically maximize one objective with given constraints and produce an operational plan. So we're now going to move on to our property assessment results. We can see here the stand delineation in the red boundaries. So stand delineation was done using our inventory data, LIDAR, and orthophotos, or looking at aerial imagery. So what LIDAR allows you to do is look at the relative height of trees next to their neighbors. We see here in the dark green you have some of the tallest trees, while in the dark red you have the shortest trees. And by establishing where there's difference in heights, you're able to establish where stand boundaries change. Now, across our forest, we have 16 total stands. 12 of them are forest stand types. Above, we're going to show you an example of how we calculated in three of these stand types. So for the balsam fir spruce stand type, the requirement is that greater than 70% of the total basal area be softwood. In addition, the balsam fir component must be greater than the spruce component. For our pine stand type, again, Greater than 70% must be softwood, but the white and red pine components must add up to greater than 30% of the basal area. For our tolerant hardwood stand type, greater than 70% must be tolerant hardwood. The resulting distribution shows that balsam fir spruce is definitely the dominant stand type. You can see here in the west, as well as the middle, and the bottom right corner, it is taking up the vast majority of the area in our woodlot. We also have softwood hardwood mix here in the yellow, as well as spruce balsam fir and some plantations in the top eastern corner as the other significant stand types. So the resulting volume distribution shows that the large portion of the most voluminous stands are in the middle of our woodlot. The green area there corresponds to stands with an average of 225 to 305 cubic meters per hectare. Now, on the western side, as well as in the bottom right corner, we have areas with very low volume, which correspond to where PCT treatment was done, removing volume. And so in these areas, in the red, that ranges between 0 and 40 cubic meters per hectare, and in the orange, ranging between 40 and 110 cubic meters per hectare. So across the entire 694 hectares of our property, we have a total volume of 86,000 cubic meters, giving an average volume per hectare of 125 cubic meters and an average basal area per hectare of 19 square meters. So when we look at the total merchantable volume within all our stand types, 
The noticeable thing is that balsam fir spruce is the vast majority of the volume at over 40,000 cubic meters, corresponding to the great amount of stand area that it occupies. Softwood hardwick mix and tolerant softwood, the two other dominant stand types, are at 9 and 19,000 cubic meters, respectively, with the rest of the stand types not operating because in much area and therefore not containing a lot of volume. For our plantation assessments that we looked at, we were looking for black and red spruce planted specifically at 2150 stems per hectare. And so when we conducted this, we found that the actual survival is 61%, ranging with most stands between about 40 and 60%. And so the reason for this low survival boils down to the insect Hylobius congener, as you can see here in the right. And so the adult weevil is attracted to the fresh green material on cut sites. When a plantation is established in close proximity to one of these cut sites, it fits right into the life cycle of Hylobius, as the stems for these seedlings will provide a food source for all of the larvae, who once they consume it, they eat the phloem, they will girdle it, and it will cause mortality. Now, our proposed recommendations to mitigate this, and it's used throughout all of our operational plans, are to not plant on any freshly cut site within one year, allowing time for foliage to fall, as well as using site preparation in the form of disc trenching to break up and expose mineral soil, as well as begin the decomposition of slash. So roads are going to be crucial to objective five and providing access to the community as well as for our operational feasibility. In the end, we classified three different types of roads. We have class one in the green here, occupying 6.2 kilometers. These roads are perfectly passable and do not require maintenance of any type. We have class two roads in the yellow at 16.5 kilometers, which are currently passable, however will need some sort of future maintenance, such as removing overhanging brush. We also have class three roads in the red at 2.1 kilometers, which are not currently passable and would require maintenance for some sort of future use. So without further ado, we have the property value for the current forest. So the net property value is approximately $689,000, or $1,000 per hectare. Now this value is calculated if we were to liquidate the property of all of the standing volume, be able to successfully sell these products to mill at current price, as well as sell the property for its bare land value, the road maintenance costs, and the boundary lines minus operational costs. So the gross value of the woodlot is approximately $2.3 million, however, with operational costs and harvest, it'll be brought down to $689,000. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not the recommendation we have for our client. And as my colleague Brandon will go over, in our 5 and 25 year operations plan, not only are we going to raise the value of the property, but our total yearly revenue will far exceed this current assessment value. Thanks, Darcy. So, we did implement a 5 and 25 year plan within this project, so we might be wondering why. So with a five-year plan, we want to make sure that our clients had a short-term view of what's going to occur within the next five years on their property in order to meet their objectives. This was completed with a heuristic approach, so that means we use our prior silvicultural knowledge in order to implement treatments that will favor a species in uh, objective two, such as yellow birch, red spruce, and eastern hemlock. The 25-year plan was a bigger picture view in order to make sure that all the operations that we plan to implement within this property will be sustainable into the future. This was completed using optimization and, li and linear programming, as, also, as well as the Remsoft Woodstock software. We plan to implement three different harvest treatment types, including clear-cut harvesting, shelterwood harvesting, and variable retention harvesting. Clear-cut harvesting will remove 100% of the volume uh, to any stand that is implemented on. We're doing this to make sure that we reduce the balsam fir st spruce stand types by at least 75% by the year 2042. Shelterwood will remove 45% of the volume of a stand initially and return in 10 years in order to remove the overstory. This type of treatment will make sure that we are favoring the species that we want to desire in objective two, such as the yellow birch, red spruce, and eastern hemlock that I mentioned. The, as well as that, variable retention will remove 70% of the volume of the stand, leaving the rest of the 30% as seed trees for the desired species. Stand selection within the first five years included specific criteria that followed closely our goals and objectives, our inventory results, and also spruce budworm susceptibility. So for example, any stand that had greater than 30% balsam fir within it was prioritized for harvest within the first five years. These are our scheduled treatments within the first five years. As you can see, there are an abundance of clear cuts with some shelterwood treatments in the blue here and also some variable attentions in the green. 
This is also to make sure we reduce the balsam fir spruce composition within the, within the forest. Resulting volume harvested after the five years is just over 22,000 cubic meters. This 22,000 cubic meters is broken up into four different products, including pulp volume, studwood volume, log volume, and firewood. Each of these products have a hardwood and softwood component, except for firewood, which just consists of hardwood. The resulting stand type distribution after five years shows an abundance of plantations within the center portion of the property. I'm going to state again that this was because we wanted to make sure we did reduce that balsam fir spruce stand type enough to reduce the susceptibility in the next five years. I'd also like to, ne to note that within the center portion where there are clear cut harvested, there are some portions that are the same, same stand type as before, so balsam fir spruce, and this is in order to protect our environmentally sensitive areas as an objective three. There also is a large portion of the property that still is balsam fir spruce, and the only reason that this is left over within the first five years is because it doesn't meet age eligibility criteria. So all these areas were too young to harvest within the first five years. As for merchantable volume distribution, the eastern side of the property has the majority of the volume. This is because in this area there are larger tree species uh, such as the red spruce, eastern hemlock, and yellow birch that we fa want to favor for objective two. And these will be left alone for the first five years in order to make sure that we implement shelter wood treatments on them to favor those species. Resulting merchantable volume by stand type shows that we actually have a 40% reduction in the balsam fir spruce stand types within the first five years. So this means that we're well on our way of meeting our objective of a 75% reduction by the year 25, year 25. You can also note that softwood hardwood mix and tolerant softwood stand types are also make up an abundance of the property after the first five years. Planting within the first five years occurs next year in 2018. So what happens in 2018, uh, we're going to be planting the, cu the cuts that were previously established before this management plan started. And while that's happening, the clear cuts on the central portion of the property will occur as well. So we want to make sure that we always leave at least one year between the cutting of the stand and also the plantations because we want to make sure we want to reduce the susceptibility to the high lobius beetle as Darby has met uh, Darcy mentioned earlier. Road development within the property. Uh, we plan to develop approximately 25 kilometers of new or upgraded roads. So I need to be clear, this isn't 25 kilometers of brand new roads. This is 25 kilometers of upgraded roads or new roads. So this includes current roads. We are planning to design two different types of new roads, including a haul road. A haul road we defined as uh, a permanent road that's properly ditched with culverts that's going to be there for a long time in order to get wood out of the property on the road into the mill. A spur road is something we find as a temporary road in order to make sure that we get economical access to timber and get them to the haul road and get them out. In summary of the five-year plan, we harvest approximately 195 hectares in total. We have a total harvest volume of just over 22,000 cubic meters and a total net revenue of just over $320,000. We also have a net present value of $300,000 uh, with a 2.75% discount rate. So what this is compared to is if our client were to invest in a long-term savings bond at that same discount rate. Getting into the 25-year tactical plan, our objective was to maximize net revenue within the property. And also, we wanted to make sure that that net revenue did not decline and the volume harvested did not decline by 10% of the previous year. Resulting stand type distribution shows, again, that there's an abundance of plantations within the property. These plantations will be red spruce plantations in order to also get rid of the balsam fir component and make sure that we reduce the susceptibility to spruce budworm. Again, as you can see in the central portion of the property, there are areas that are still the same spruce fir stand type in order to make sure we favor those uh, sensitive areas in objective three. Resulting, resulting virtual volume by stand type shows again that it's not much of a change from the year five. The only real change is that there's a reduction in volume on the eastern side of the property. So this means that we have implemented these shelter with treatments that we were talking about earlier. Resulting merchantable volume by stand type actually shows that we've reduced the volume within balsam fir spruce stand types by 75% by the year 2042. So we've actually met and we will exceed that goal. Another note within this is that plantations take up a generally large portion of this, of this uh, volume by stand type. So with this, these plantations eventually will transition into tolerant softwood stand types because with our site preparation, it'll be easier for yellow birch species as well as other maple species to seed in and create that tolerant softwood uh, stand type. In summary of the 25-year tactical plan, we harvest a total of 730 hectares. So you may be wondering how we're harvesting 730 hectares of a 694 hectare property. 
Well, the, the, tr the shelter wood treatments that we're planning to implement require multiple entries. So these entries are counted twice in the areas. We have a total volume of just over 100,000 cubic meters harvested over the 25 year period with, an annual, with a net revenue of just over $1.2 million. As for future property value, we did manage to increase the value of the property by $158,000 from current value in, by the year 2042. So the value of the property after 25 years will be $847,000 or just over $1,200 per hectare. And this has been increased by improving the road networks and also increasing the component of uh, softwood logs in the property. I'm going to pass it over to Darcy again just to go over some sources of uncertainty within our project. Thank you, Brandon. So with any forecast, there is a certain degree of uncertainty, especially surrounding financial values. For our management plan, we take a look at three of the greatest sources of uncertainty. So the first is the potential for a future market crash. We all know that the stock markets and pricing are very, very volatile. We saw in 2008 with the housing market crash, as well as currently with the issues with the softwood lumber agreement being trumped up, we may have a great devaluation in our product values. So for the potential for a spruce budworm outbreak, this is going to be the second source of uncertainty that we look at. And the spruce budworm is a cyclical conifer defoliator, which targets in decreasing order of priority balsam fir, white spruce, black spruce, and red spruce, hence the objective for reducing the composition of balsam fir within our forest. Our third source of uncertainty is looking at the potential for a YSE reimbursement funding cut. So the YSC is funded by the government and provides reimbursement of up to 90% of the cost of silvicultural treatments for private woodlot owners. To look at these sources of uncertainty, we use sensitivity analysis of four scenarios. The first three look at the potential net revenue impacts of a market crash resulting in a 50% reduction in prices. We look at if there's a YSC funding cut, both 50% and a total funding cut, as well as a combination of one and two. To observe potential gross revenue impacts, we will look at scenario four, the potential for a spruce budworm outbreak. Looking at the potential net revenue impact of any of those scenarios, we look at our five-year operational plan and we look at the yearly net revenue. So in the top left there, in the light green, we have BAU, or business as usual, where yearly profit is between sixty dollars and $70,000. Were there to be YSC funding cuts, this profit will drop to approximately forty-five dollars to $50,000 if there was a 50% cut in the light blue, and if there's a complete cut in the dark blue columns, yearly profit drops to between twenty-five dollars and $45,000. Now, if there were to be a market crash and devaluation of our products, yearly operations are no longer profitable. We can see here that with a 50% market crash in the yellow column, there's a net yearly loss of approximately $100,000. Were there to be both a market crash and YSC funding cuts, in the green columns here, this drops to a yearly loss of over $100,000. So to look at the potential for a spruce budworm outbreak, we used the calculator from Fundy Model Forest and For Us Research to look at an outbreak in approximately year 2022, which would be based off the current rate of spread when it would arrive in Taymouth. So what this allows us to do is look at two scenarios, a moderate and severe outbreak with and without the use of BTK. So BTK is a naturally occurring soil bacteria and when it is consumed by spruce budworm, it will cause mortality in them, thereby reducing the damage to your growing stock. So for our moderate spruce budworm outbreak scenario, without a BTK application, the predicted loss is approximately $1.5 million of gross revenue. Were we to apply BTK, the potential loss drops down to approximately $800,000. Now, BTK is applied aerially for $40 to $50 per hectare. On a 694 hectare woodlot, this is approximately $35 to $40,000, so definitely a worthwhile investment. For our severe outbreak scenario, the potential gross revenue loss is $2.2 million in the orange without BTK, and using BTK, it drops down to $900,000. So now I'll pass it off to my partner, Brandon, who's going to go over our project report card. We developed what we thought we would call a report card. So this is just an evaluation of how we met all of our objectives and if we did. Objective one, as you may recall, was to maximize growth potential within the property. We wanted to increase the area of longlist species by the year 2042 and also reduce the balsam fir dominated stand types by at least 75% by the year 2042 as well. 
We did manage to reduce the area of balsam fir stand types by the year 2042 by 75 percent. The intolerant hardwood composition was reduced by 50 percent within the property and those levels were maintained in the preceding years. So we met that. Objective two was to maintain and promote desired species within the property. In order to do this, we wanted to maintain composition of red spruce, yellow birch, and eastern hemlock at or above current levels. So through the implementation of silvicultural treatments such as variable retention and shelterwood harvesting, we will increase the, the composition of red spruce, yellow birch, and eastern hemlock. Objective three was to protect environmentally sensitive areas. We wanted to make sure we implemented a 30 meter stream buffer on all major watercourses within the property and limited basal area removal to 20%. We did implement this, so that is a success as well. Objective four was to increase shareholder return and value into the future. We wanted to make sure that at least 50% of all the treatments carried out annually were reimbursable through YSC. We also wanted to make sure it was a stable net revenue annually, and we wanted to increase the value of the property by $100,000 by the year 2042. We did manage to make sure that at least 50% of all treatments carried out annually were reimbursable through the YSC marketing board. Our annual net revenue does not fluctuate by more than 10% of the previous year, and our woodlot value increased by $158,000. Objective five was to increase benefits to the community of Tamath. We wanted to increase local property values, as well as contribute to the local economy by selling products to them. We wanted to also continue to provide access to the property for recreational and hunting purposes. The property value has been increased. Wood products will be sold to the local markets, as well as providing better access to the locals the community of Tamath for recreation, so we will be upgrading roads and there will not be gates on the property, so this will better be able to access people for hunting. Before I conclude our presentation today, I just want to go over some potential costs to produce this management plan. And I just want to be clear, this price is not something that uh, a landowner would expect to pay for a professional management plan. This is just simply the price that we valued ourselves at with all the work we put into this project. So we valued ourselves at approximately $24 an hour with just over $1,600 in total over the last two semesters. This including driving, administration fees, and other miscellaneous fees totals just over $42,000. So with that, I want to acknowledge uh, everyone that's helped us out along the way, and definitely York and Gloria Baylor, as well as Sylvan Woodlands Limited. We want to acknowledge uh, Jason Golding and Sean Donovan for helping us out with everything. And also, I just want to take a minute to thank everyone in my group for all the hard work they put in for this entire semester and the last. And with that, I'd like to invite them all up and answer any questions you guys might have.